Welcome to TTS 2021, organized by Sección de Idiomas from Facultad de Humanidades, USAC, the Embassy from the United States in Guatemala and Ajede. My name is Isaac Eguizabal, and I am glad to host this conference. I would like to begin by giving some general instructions for the conference. At the end of the conference, there will be 10 minutes for questions and answers. Please, don't forget to write your questions in the chat on YouTube. We will be happy to read them at the end. We invite you to subscribe to our official channels, Idiomas USAC and TTS conferences to follow all the conference on these three days. 10 minutes before the conference ends, we will be sharing the attendance link in the chat. It will be available 15 minutes more after conference ends. Please, Make sure to sign it to have access to your diploma. Diplomas will be available on June 12, 2021 for 30 days in the link that we will be shared along with the attendance link by the end of the conference. We appreciate your valuable participation in the conference, contextualized English language instruction and technology integration in the classroom, given by Master Hector Palala, to whom we gladly welcome today in the name of the Organization Committee of TTS 2021. I will be introducing Master Hector Palala by reading his biography. Hector Palala is from Guatemala. He holds a Bachelor of Arts, double major in Pedagogy and Educational Administration and High School English Language Teaching from Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala. He was also granted with a Master's of Arts in Development Studies focused on children and adolescents from Universidad Rafael Landívar and a Master of Arts in Education teaching and learning with technology from University of Nebraska Lincoln with a Fulbright Last Power Scholarship and where he is currently pursuing a PhD in curriculum studies and new technologies in education with an assistantship from University of Nebraska Lincoln. He worked as professor of pedagogy, didactic, Introduction of Critical Thinking, Literary Theory, Literature of United States, English as a Foreign Language, and Philosophy of Education in the Humanities Faculty at Universidad de San Carlos de Guatemala. He has also worked as a teacher of various great levels, demonstrating commitment and responsibility in these positions. He is certain that education and new technologies help our teachers and students to become proactive in their own development in a vibrant society. Currently, he teaches integrating technology into the classroom instructional technology TIAC 259 during fall and spring semester within the Department of Teaching, Learning and Teacher Education in the College of Education at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. He focuses on helping future high school teachers implement technology to their teaching. He will contribute and help Guatemala become competitive as it pursues further improvements in the field of education. His research is towards literacy programs in indigenous language, languages, pedagogy, of tenderness and artificial intelligence for education. He teaches and he stands for justice, dignity, and human rights. Let's welcome Master Hector Palala for this interesting conference.
Muchísimas gracias, Isaac. Muchas gracias por esta bienvenida. I really appreciate the words and everything you have done with this time. Agradezco a la sección de idiomas, a Luisa Fernanda y a todo el equipo detrás de TTS por esta oportunidad y a todos ustedes bienvenidos, bienvenidos a, a, a esta conferencia. Espero que les sea de beneficio para todos. Espero que puedan llevarse un poquito de lo que en esta tarde tengo a bien presentarles. Así que bienvenidos y para iniciar quiero hacer el siguiente ejercicio y van a usar en el chat de... Slack. Entonces, en este momento van a ver en el chat de YouTube un enlace para entrar a la aplicación Slack. Lo único que necesitan es ingresar con su cuenta de correo electrónico, el que ustedes desean, puede ser Gmail o Outlook, o el que ustedes desean, e ingresan a ese grupo. Van a escuchar la canción, la primera parte de la canción. Entonces, no escriban. La primera parte es que ingresen a ese enlace que es Slack. Y ahorita les comparto la canción. And I want you to interpret the lyrics. So how the students will interact, how the students will react when you ask the students to interpret what they are listening. So some of the students will say, hmm, what I heard was this. Students already here and teachers in my channel. Okay, welcome. Welcome to Slack. We're going to use the Slack right now. So if you see, then turn it a little bit down. Okay. If you go to your left side of your screen, you will see channels. Channels on Slack is like a section where you can join. It's like a, a group of discussion. So I have general discussion and I have new tools for language teaching, okay? So just go to the channels and join the channel. Maria de Los Angeles is already and in, in the rest on the new tools for language teaching. And the rest are on general channel, okay? Right now, I want you to write in this channel, the general channel, okay? 
about the scaffolding. What's a scaffolding when we are teaching English? What is it? Write your thoughts on this channel, general channel. What is scaffolding? We have two songs, one in English and the other one was the interpretation of someone who is a Spanish speakers who heard the same song in a different way. So right now, just write your comments, please. Let me see. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session. Okay, what's the scaffolding? Stop sharing and I wait for your answers. Good. Okay, now everybody is already in Slack. So I will start my presentation. Okay, welcome to our contextualized language instruction and technology integration. Sean todos bienvenidos. Empecé con la canción para poderles eh, introducir a lo que es Slack, para los que no lo conocían. Y para los que ya lo conocían, pues es una herramienta que vamos a utilizar. Just welcome. Welcome to our uh, TTS 2021. And this is the overview of the session today. We're going to talk a, a, a little bit about the contextualized language learning, the culture of technology. We're going to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence, uh, we are going to use the summer model to evaluate technology, and we are going to explore some new emerging technology that you can use in your classes by using contextualized language learning, by also evaluating technology using, by using summer model, and then we are going to have an evaluation. That's the summary. Okay, so let's start. So what is a second language? What is, this, what is second language acquisition? Second language acquisition is not just one language, it's like the study of people who are learning another language. It can be four, fifth, not just second language. In Guatemala, we have students who already know two languages or three languages. Some of them speak uh, Cachiquel, Quiche, and Spanish. Others just speak Spanish and Quiche as a second language, and they learn English as a third language. So this is, this is important because sometimes we just think our students will speak just Spanish and not another language. So keep in mind that the language, second language acquisition is everyone who is learning another language, okay? It's just one word, but has a lot of meanings. But what can I tell you about the contextualize? What is contextualization of the teaching? The contextualization, some of you could say, well, it's about bringing culture into the class. This is one element. But uh, if I talk about the contextualized language, it will take a lot of time. So I will just talk a little bit about it. So contextualization is to bring into the classroom real life situations, meaningful use of the language. A lot of students learn English just to pass a written test. So they, they learn reading, they learn a little bit of writing, that they are struggling with the listening and speaking. Why? Because some of the teachers are forgetting about this context, real life. When you are outside speaking Spanish, you are not just writing or reading. You learn to survive around, your, around the world you are living in. So it's not just two skills, it's everything around you, it's connected to the language. So contextualize, is that teachers must bring meaningful use of the language. And we're going to see how and why is it important. So when you are planning an in English class, so please, you need to bring relevant materials that will keep the students coming back for more. It's not a boring class. It's not just a test. It's not just 
this is what the curriculum national base is telling me. This is what the school is asking me to teach. It's about you as teacher, it's you taking care of your students. Relevant material, what is it? So when we are talking about contextualized learning, we are going to talk about this. Construct language through a blended purpose. What is the purpose of your teaching? What is the purpose of your lesson? What situations and social interaction are you bringing in the classroom? It's not the same when you just come teach grammar and then pass the test as when you are bringing more situations in the class that are actually bringing the students into real life situations to use their English. Integrated skills and interaction patterns. So the integrated skills is everything has to be connected. You don't have to work in a separate skill. Today, just speaking, tomorrow, you're listening. Everything, everything has to be connected. So contextualized language learning is that. Every time, even in the, in the book, it says listening, you have to use the four skills. They will read, they will talk, they will listen to the words. So don't think the students will use just one skill when you are teaching. So, Keep this in mind when you are planning, that will help you to organize your lesson plans. And also that will help students to go deeper into the language. And the most important thing here is to you, for you to be creative. Use themes, themes and topics that are of high interest and motivate students. Imagine you bring into the class your own interest. The students will be bored all the time. Try to connect with your students. Ask the students what is outside, what movies, what songs are they listening to, what food they like, what restaurants they are talking about, what trending topics are on social media for the students to get into the class. Even if the topic in the book is saying something you can actually transform to a different theme and teaching the same grammar rules the book is telling you to teach, but you are bringing real life situation into the classroom. And what I'm saying about contextualized language learning is about communication. And I, I know most of you know about this. The most of communication interpretive, presentational, and interpersonal. But what are those? Those are the modes of communication that you need to work together when you are planning your lessons or you are teaching. And you will see how we're going to be interacting here. Here is just the theory and then we're going to discuss, okay? So please use the Slack for questions or comments in the general section. So in the most of communication, we have interpersonal. The interpersonal is the two-way communication. It's the most common thing we have outside their classroom or inside the classroom whenever we walk. We talk with someone, we talk in group, we talk, we talk in, with a friend. So you need to recreate those situations in the classroom. It's not just the teacher, repeat students. This is one. What about they speak? What about group discussion? What about they interviewing another group of students outside the classroom. So the interpersonal mode of communication is about speaking and listening. It's about conversations. It's about reading and writing. Use text messages. Students love text messages, not to the teacher, not to your parents, to the parents. They love to text messages to their friends. So try to use those things in the classroom. Use social media for students who are comfortable with social media. Write letters, ask students to write letters to someone famous. So this is the interpersonal. You are actually asking the students to use the language in a two-way communication. What is the interpretive? The interpretive is the one-way communication. Is what I was asking you to do. Listen to this song in English, and then you listen to the song in Spanish. Then I ask you to interpret the song. That would be the one-way communication because you are listening, and then you are interpreting what you are listening, and then you can share. So when you think about this, you can actually use activities with interpretive, communication mode, or and go to interpersonal. So after they interpret, they share. 
and they have two-way communication. For reading, they can have authentic text. I want you to encourage you to use a lot of authentic material. Authentic material is everything that is used and created for the language speakers in their country. Magazines, TV shows, uh, radio stations, movies, everything that is created for this specific audience, in our case, English speakers, this is the material you need to bring. I know a lot of teachers in the, in the school, they create their own material, but please start using authentic material. And that is the relevant material students will be enjoying because that's real life, it's outside the book. I'm talking about authentic material because you see the difference between a conversation in our listening exercises in the book and the listening exercises in the audio we have in our books than the listening outside the book, in a movie, in an interview, in a TV show, in a radio station, it's totally different. So try to bring a lot of this authentic material into the classroom to help students develop this communication skill. So, and the presentational, the presentational, the presentational is the one-way communication. The one-way communication where the student can actually read and then analyze, interpret, and then share. So this is about writing and this is about speaking. So students can actually write messages, articles, advertisements, flyers, brochures, short stories, reports, scripts, and presentations. So they did something to present something to someone. Speaking, this is like the project they create after they already understand the topic. And then the speaking, they can tell a story, they can interact, like giving a speech, they can, uh, have some skits like presenting uh, the news or something like that. If we are in real life classrooms, we can do that. But now everything is, everything is going to be digital for, for this time. So ask the students to do that. There, there are a lot of apps that you can use. I'm talking a lot, I know, but I will give you a chance to talk, okay? And please, this is just the theory about the contextualized learning. Don't forget about learning versus acquisition. Both are different, but those are important. It depends on the student you have in the class. The learning is a process that adults have to learn the language, to acquire the language. All the process, all the elements they already have in the first language, they use it to learn the second language. And the language acquisition is when the kids is already involved into the language. They are, uh, they are in, Imagine one of my kids are growing in the United States and he or she is involved into the culture and he just acquired the language because this is the majority language spoken around the kid. But the learning, it's actually the student who is not around the English speakers and they have to learn from the Spanish. So please, I know this is a review for most of you but try to include these competences in your lesson plans when you teach English. Don't forget about the social cultural competence. The social cultural competence in the language is how speakers express themselves within a social and cultural context. They need to know how to interact with professors at the university, when they are watching a game at the stadium, when they go to the grocery stores, those social cultural competence that they need to know what language, how to interact, how to use it. This course competence, the elements, how the words are connected and how it's well organized. So this, the, the student will actually know that we can, we can organize verbs, adjectives, and articles to express our feelings. The linguistic competence, they can actually identify sounds words, form, word formation, sentence structure. So they actually acquire this linguistic competence in your class. It's not just about the test, it's about all these competences. The other one is the formulae competence. This is the unanalyzed chunks of language that the student already know 
because is he he or she is becoming more like the native speakers that they don't think too much what they are speaking, but they are actually using the language. For example, the, some of the students at the beginning will said uh, the red the, the car the car red because the Spanish is the carro rojo. But when the students is more involved in the class and he's growing in, in the English, he will say automatically the red car. And that is the for why competence. When he doesn't think about the rule, he's just using this chunk of language correctly. And the interactional competence is about the, his, the, his, the, the gestures, functions, and the turn, when and how I can, I can interrupt a conversation, how I can lead the conversation, how I, I can ask for information, how I call someone for information, how I give bad news or good news. That is the interaction of competence. So if you don't bring real life situations in the classroom, students won't develop these competencies. They know in Spanish, but they need to learn in English. The same competence that they use in, in Spanish. And the last competence in this contextualized language is the strate uh, strategic competence. This strategic competence is the, the strategies to communicate, to compensate deficiencies in other areas. Imagine a student doesn't listen the word correctly. How can he ask someone else to repeat the same information? You have to teach the students how to do that. How you can apologize when you misinterpret some information. Maybe the door said, don't get in. And then the student just got in. And so how can you use those competencies to say, to apologize or to say, I'm sorry, where is it? Ask for those real life information. Where the student is nervous, trying to use the language. That's the contextualized language. But because I talk a lot, I have said, how does technology benefit this educational experience in our classrooms? Talking about contextualized language learning, hmm, let's see technology. Can we use technology? Let's see. So now I want you to write down two apps you are using every day and you will go to Slack. What apps are you using every day? We are going to use the general channel. What apps are you using every day? Go to the general channel and share your thoughts. Okay, I success Telegram, WhatsApp, and Classroom, and French bot. Hmm, interesting. So I says WhatsApp, Zoom, Google Meet, Facebook. Awesome. Sarai, Carla, Stephanie, Google Slides, Canva, Google Meet, Zoom. And Sarah is a YouTube, also TikTok, Zoom, um, Tommy Digital, WhatsApp, Facebook, Google Meet, Canva, Padlet, WhatsApp, WhatsApp, and Facebook. Good. Now, okay, feel free. If you don't know where to go, I will ask again to share the link of this uh, Slack because we are using the Slack to interact with you. I try to change them, but mostly I use Quizzes, Kahoot, and uh, Booklet. Awesome. Lulu said she's using Kahoot, and Alina is using Spotify and Pinterest. That's interesting and very good. Oh, Alina, thank you for sharing this about Spotify. How can you use Spotify in your English classes? How students can create this playlist where they can study something? Uh, that's interesting. Thank you. Uh, Hugo Carrillo said WhatsApp and Google Drive. Noemi is Instagram, and Maria Los Angeles said Google Forms. Thank you for sharing your, uh, your apps. Uh, Ingrid says, what's up? Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Kahoot booklet, live worksheets, and Instagram on Canva. Okay, thank you. Everyone is using an app, at least one. Some of you are afraid to use technology. Others are not that afraid. But what about our students? Can you 
be like your students? Mm -mm. Let me see if some of the students are actually writing on. Um, um. Okay, Canva, there are some students sharing on um, YouTube. Uh, they are using Canva. Maria Rocio Cano said me, Telegram, EducaPlay Classroom. And Lourdes says Classroom, Meet, Zoom, Canva, Quizzes, Formative, Nearpod. Good. And Lourdes Abigail is saying hi. <laughs> okay, we're using Slack to do the conversation so you can actually use the app. Um, if you want to continue with the chat on YouTube, it's okay. So now, what is technology? I want you to use your Twitter in your cell phone. Are you ready? So I want to listen to you right now. Go to your Twitter. And talk to me, what is technology? I will wait for you on Twitter. This is the only way I can listen to your voice. So please go to Twitter. There is a link on your the YouTube channel and join me on that channel. Let me see if you can be there. Hi, Isaac, you can speak. Can you speak? Joa is there. Joa, can you speak? I think you can. You can ask for the uh, for the microphone. I have another guest. I have three. Now you can speak. Let me listen to you. Let me see. Uh, Edna, feel free to speak. What is technology for you? Let me see the other. Edna, can you listen to me? Yeah, there. Edna, can you listen to me? Yes. Feel free to speak. Why? Yeah, there. 
Uh, it's a tool that we can use to uh, communicate. Yeah, could you listen to me? Yes. Yes. For some reason, I cannot listen to that. Okay, I'll be back with the uh, Instagram because something is not working good in the in the Instagram or Twitter. But I will show you. Okay, what is technology? Technology is cognitive approach. We have uh, three definitions for that. Is the cognitive approach, instrumental approach, and systematic approach. So the cognitive approach and the instrumental approach are together. One is about the applying science and rural theories. And the instrumental approach is artifacts and tools. So cognitive, what is the uh, cognitive approach? The cognitive approach of the technology is when you use uh, the technology as a science. But what is instrumental approach? The instrumental approach of technology is this. The instrumental approach can be a board. The instrumental approach of technology can be these papers. So the technological approach, it's actually everything that is, let me stop here. This is the instrumental approach. The board, the chairs, the table, everything that is used to help humans to do something is instrumental approach of technology. This is an instrumental approach. This is an instrumental approach. And I want to tell you about the systematic approach. The systematic approach of technology is about the cultural aspect, organizational aspect, and technical aspects of technology. And I want you to go back again to Slack. But in this time, I want you to tell me about artificial intelligence. What is the first thought you get when you read artificial intelligence? So go to Slack, but now, you are going to go to new tools, this one. What is the first thought you get when you read artificial intelligence? Go to the new tools language channel and answer. What is the first thought about artificial intelligence? Drones, clones, what else? We are now in the new tools for language.
Carla said that she thinks about robots. Subjective. Something, something created by scientists. On, and I also said robots. Something real, making real with technology. Development of science. Something that is not a lie, robots or something, yes, okay. So artificial intelligence is something that is gonna make it easier for you. The theory and development of computer system able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence. So it's a computer systems, okay? Able to perform or imitate humans, human intelligence, such as, visual perception, speech recognition, decision-making and translation between languages. So the computer is actually learning how to imitate humans by using, by imitating this, visual perception, speech recognition and decision-making and other things. In other words, there is a problem for humans. Imagine uh, the use of Google, to ask questions. How many of you use Google to ask questions? How many of you speak to Google, Siri or Bixby, Alexa? So those apps, Duolingo, Alexa, Google Home, Siri and Bixby, they are actually artificial intelligence. And they are called artificial intelligence before the problem is not solved. When the problem is solved, imagine a human has a problem, okay? We need the people to research in a different way. I want them, we want them to interact with the uh, technology. So they create Google Home. But before Google Home is just artificial intelligence. When the problem is solved, when the artificial intelligence is already working, we name it. And we name it like we, we know, Duolingo, Alexa, Google Home, Siri, or Bixby, okay? So it's a computer system imitating human. So how do you feel when you use technology? Go to Slack again. How do you feel? Thank you. How do you feel? Isaac said it makes life easier. Let me see if someone else is take, talking here. Okay. I feel great, it's quick answered, update. Okay, good. Oh, someone else is controlling here, robots, Alexa. Oh, I was missing these comments. Thank you. So if you see on your left, there is a tool. It's channel, general and new tools. And the new tools is how you feel. Feels great, interested, technology of curious. I feel great because I get big answers. Excellent. Okay. So now it's time to explore. Let's explore this technology. Replica. Let me see. Replica is an artificial intelligence that makes a uh, avatar. And the students can actually create an avatar. Let me see if I create my own avatar for you. Oh. 
Okay, this is the app. It's called Replica. Replica will create an avatar for you. You just have to sign in with your Gmail account or any other account or ask your students to do that and students can interact with their own avatar. So if you are afraid of students to interact with unknown people, you can ask students to interact with themselves with this artificial intelligence. So they can practice, practice English and they can use the language in a different way. So I create my own avatar. I log in and it will give me like step one, step two, and then ta-da, we have an avatar. It will ask you for a name. I call my, uh, my avatar as my, one of my friends, my best friend's name. This is my avatar and we choose the conversation. It says choose the conversation, continue chatting, and I say, how nice, how are you feeling? And I can start chatting with my own avatar. You see? This is my answer, my questions, and this is the machine or the artificial intelligence talking to me. Moon, actually, I'm glad you are here. Thanks. Um, So actually, it creates a conversation out of nothing. And every time you continue adding conversation or helping the artificial intelligence or the computer system, it will give you points you have here. So every time you create something new, we have a diary, memories, we can add pictures with the avatar and you can talk to it. So here we can use the contextualized language learning by using artificial intelligence and students are protected. So they are not speaking with someone that uh, they don't know. So it's gonna be a good safe and practice. You can actually use it with your students. So this is replica. The second one is Google Earth. Okay, Google Earth actually helps you. It's a project, actually. It's not, as you see here, it says an experimental version of Earth. How can we use this artificial intelligence from Google Earth to teach? We can create stories. We can ask students to go and find places where the grandparents grew up. They can go and travel to different places around the world. And let's see which place we can uh, actually explore. We have places here to explore. We can go to my place. Let me see, traveling to where I am right now. Let me check here. I am here right now. So you can actually visit where I am. How can we use this in our classes? It's up to you. Use contextualized language learning. How can you use this technology to teach your lessons, to connect with your students? So we have research bottom, and also this is a budgeter. It's about the projects. So they have different projects that you can actually work with. Let me see about this project. Uh, so there are already people creating projects to interact with. So in this case, I just chose this one. Students can actually create their own projects about Guatemala. They can include places from our country, how they can communicate, how can they interact. 
Okay. This is a project of how the river is changing through the years. You can see. And there is another one here. I close this one and go to this one. When you click, it will send you to different places where people are already showing pictures. So just click on this square and you can travel all over the world. You can get information. And also you can add your own projects and add your students to use it. So let me see if I can go back again to where I am. And if you notice here is the person is you where you are, the street view. So you can see the street. You can change this as a 3D. Really model. So you can see actually the buildings. Really. So how can you use this technology in your classes? That's the question for you now. Okay. So we have replica, we have Google Earth, and then we go to other AI. I'm not going to use the other AI, but actually it's a voice recognition. So the students can speak English and the machine learning will record and write what they what you are or recording or give a dictation. For example, uh, recording, hello everyone, we are recording this. I did a photo boom. So the students can actually practice their English by telling uh, this machine learning or artificial intelligence to write what you are speaking. And that can also have practice. So how can you use it? How students can talk about it? How can students interact? Tell the other students how to use it. So I want you to do this. The other one is augmented reality. What is augmented reality? Augmented reality is right now something that you can see on Pokemon Go. In Pokemon Go, students can actually see augmented reality. So situations that are outside, let me see if I can do this. So Google actually has artificial intelligence for virtual reality. So virtual reality is all elements or artificial elements included into real life situations. So like this one, like this one. So they have an example here. If you go to your Google uh, app and you write the name on an animal, for example, in this video, they, they, are, they are showing you how it can be an augmented reality. So you can write hug and you can actually bring the animal into this real life picturing. Students can create videos and create stories based on this augmented reality. They don't have to go outside uh, to do that. They can use it at home. They can do that and they can actually create something for your classes. It's according to your team. So bring all the reality into technology for students to, so they can use the language in a very interactive way. And the third one, but it's not the last one, is this one, within. We think it's an artificial intelligence or virtual reality where you can use these things, okay? These virtual reality glasses. But actually, if you don't have, you can use just the app. If you go to Within, you go experience and you have featured animated music, documentary, horror, experimental. Let's go to animated. So in, in, in animated, 
if you have the VR settings, so you can actually see the 3D elements. But if the students don't have, you can actually still see in it. Let me see if it's charging right now. So I chose this. You can actually move your mouse on your computer and see how the story is being developed, the prop. When you can fly oh. That sounds like Crows gonna play the rooster can I think he landed. I think he landed. Oh yo yo. That guy has got a voice. That guy has got a voice. Come on. You can also go to documentaries and you choose and students can come see and then report. So they can also share like two-way conversation, two-way communication, what they, they are seeing. They can also use it in a group project and they can also speak what they are watching and seeing. They can report, they can interpret, and then they can have a presentation what they learn from these videos. So this is outside the YouTube channel, it's outside everything that you already know, but there are a lot of elements that you can use in your English classes. And this last one, I think some of you already know about this one. So I want you to use this uh, app right now before we finish. It's called Quick Growth. I think we already use this tool, so I want you to use it. If some of you already use this one, try to use it by yourself. So you can use this one to practice. So it gives the student a vocabulary words. If the student knows, they will draw it. So you actually helping the student to use artificial intelligence, but using it for language purposes. So you can see, now play. This is or scissors, or basket, 
Sorry, I couldn't guess it. I see line. Or marker. Or toothpaste. Or screwdriver. I see crown. Or matches. Or campfire. Or houseplant. I see flashlight. I see frying pan. Sorry, I couldn't guess it. I see circle. Or shoe. Oh, I know, it's flower. Okay, try to use it. Let me go to Slack again. Now that you already played with Google Draw, okay? So let's talk about the benefits of artificial intelligence in education. So in this way, think, pair, and share, I want you to share your thoughts on Slack. What do you think? Do we have any benefits in your classes by using artificial intelligence? I know we don't have a lot of time to explore more, but I want you to talk about these things there. So I want you, sorry, I want you to talk about um, play, you can play again about withdraw and change the language and see and interact and see how it changes the way you are learning the language. So technology actually is the rethinking of the enterprise of schooling in ways that you can actually use technology to develop the 21st century skills. So use technology to be useful in the classes. Don't use technology just to teach something, okay? Use technology for students to practice the language. That's the purpose of technology in the language, on the textualized language learning. So one more time, play again, I said, and they will fortune right now. For this one, okay, let me see if I can. For the last discussion, you are going to use this hashtag in your Instagram, TTS 2021. TTS 2021 GT, hashtag or pound TTS 2021 GT or GT. TTS 2021 GT, hashtag, and you are using a picture, random picture you want to share in your Instagram and use this TTS 2021 GT. How? Okay, first, the first one who are going to do that. Let me see if I have it. The, The first students who are going to share on Instagrams are the high school teachers. High school teachers, I want you to use this. High school teacher, use this technology, Instagram, with the hashtag TTS2021GT. High school teachers and then elementary school teachers. And the other one will be the teachers who are in elementary and high school teachers. And higher education teachers. Go to Instagram and use the hashtag. First, high school teachers. Second, 
Then the K-12 teachers are the teachers who are teaching in elementary school and high school. Please go to Instagram. And I know some of the teachers don't use Instagram, but try to use Instagram to share any picture that is connected to what you have learned so far. And use the hashtag TTS2021. TTS 2021 GT. Then wait. For the ones who don't have Instagram, just see the rest of the students uh, working on it. Okay, don't worry. Let me see if students are using Instagram. If you don't have Instagram, it's okay, don't worry. Another thing, if your account is private, I cannot see your pictures. So it's, it must be public profile to see your pictures. Just upload the picture and write the hashtag, TTS2021. Yeah, if your account is private, I cannot see. Wait one more minute and I see someone did it. I want already. Take on. It is. Okay, I guess no most most of the students don't have Instagram. It's okay. Let me see. What am I just introducing to this? Because it can be used in your classes. Let me see. Okay. I will stop the activity because I think no one has Instagram or they have private accounts. But it's fine. Don't worry about it. Let me go back to the presentation and see if you can, we can continue and finish. Okay, so the summary is what, why, and how. So I want you to stop sharing, okay? I want you to write in a paper, okay, in a piece of paper. What you learned today, 
why it is important for you and how you can use it in your classes. Write it down in a piece of paper because we're going to use it at the end. What you learn, why it's important and how you will use it. Okay, thank you so much. And thank you, that's it. Write in the paper and tell me why it's important and how. Now time for questions. At the end of the presentation, you will have more information about artificial intelligence. So you have some theory to learn more about artificial intelligence. You have some podcasts you can use for yourself as teachers to get more. And there are more apps that we don't have time to explore, but it's up to you to go there and see how you can use them in your classes. Thank you, Isaac. Thank you, Master Hector Palala, for the valuable information provided to all of the participants through this conference. And of course, we have some questions for you that they were sending through uh, the YouTube channel and us also to Slack. So I'm going to start with the first question because I think they love the Replica app. And there are a lot of questions from there. And they would like to know if you have to pay for this tool. The Replica app is free. You just have to open the account by using your uh, Gmail or Outlook account and it's going to be free. You're actually helping artificial intelligence to be developed. So it's free. Excellent. So now we can use the Replica app. And Maggie Puak asked through the YouTube channel if... Can you explain more about 3D reality? Yes, the 3D reality or virtual reality, in other words, the virtual reality is to bring like the real world into technology. So it's like actually having the experience or being in a place where you are not able to go right away. So you can visit a forest, you can visit a, a zoo, you can go to Spain by using just a, a virtual reality. So virtual reality is just uh, imitating real world by using technology. And you can actually use technology to go in different places. That's amazing. And I think Google Earth is one of these programs that you were showing to us, but they were asking as well if uh, Google Earth uses a lot of internet connection do you need a, a internet speed or something like that what would you say about that for most of the apps i was showing and i mean google earth will be okay with some of the internets in guatemala i think you can use it i mean you don't you you don't need i think it's about google earth right what you are talking about yeah yeah, you can use it. You can try it. Some of you will be having trouble. So maybe you can wait more than five minutes to launch the Google Earth. And it's easier if you use a Google Earth in your phone. It's going to be faster. Faster. That, that's great. There's another question that came through the YouTube channel from Mercy. And she asked, what do you recommend teacher can do with the students who do not have access to technology? That's a really good question for you, Master Palala. What's your yes, There are different situations in our country. As I was telling you, uh, the systematic approach of technology is not the one I taught you. I taught you just the artificial intelligence as one of the technologies we can use. But if our students don't have technology, we need to ask our students what kinds of technology they have. I mean, technology is not just the computer, it's not just the cell phone. Okay, I was showing you the different technology, it can be a board. So how can you use what the students have in their houses? They actually can do different things by using what they have. If they have only WhatsApp, think about activities where students can actually recreate things. They can go outside and record something outside and record a short video. You don't have to ask, like 10 minutes video for students who don't have a lot of technology. And I know the reality in our country is totally different in different areas. It's not just in one way. I mean, Guatemala City is one thing and uh, rural areas is different. But try to ask students what they have in their own community in sense of learning, 
in the sense of creating things. So they can actually create things. If they like, they can use whatever they have around their houses to create, to use their own virtual reality. They can create stories outside their houses. They can create, recreate things outside. I mean, in the forest, uh, in the town, they can visit the, uh, the mayor building. I mean, if just WhatsApp is technology, then think about what can we use in WhatsApp? No, they don't have WhatsApp. They don't even have, okay, do they have a radio station? Let's use a radio. How? There are a lot of ways to go and ask permission to use radio stations and ask students, okay, students, turn the radio off at 7 a.m. I'll be there listening. So if you just focus on one way of technology, you will be missing a lot of things around you. There are some towns in Guatemala who actually have these uh, channels, like specific channels from the town. You can actually go ask for sponsors to recreate one class for them if you want. Uh, Facebook Lives, if they don't have any other things, so they have Facebook. So try to think outside the box. This is just like defensive, you can see like this. But actually, use your context and bring what the students have in the class. And don't think it's not possible. For sure. And about your experience using Google Earth, what activity do you recommend? For Google Earth, there are a lot because it's like a project being created. One of the things that I was asking to do is like, they can actually add information about the town where they live. So they can spot, for example, uh, Chimaltenango, and they can go to a specific store in Chimaltenango. They can interview the owner of the store. They can add information on Google Earth about the store. They can write it in English. They can write it in English and Spanish. It can be a store, it can be a touristic place that is not well known outside the, the, the city because a lot of towns in Guatemala, they have specific attractions that we don't know. So they can actually add those information, that information into Google Earth. Another thing is that Google Earth also has quizzes. You can use the quizzes there so students can learn some of the vocabulary according to what they want. Also, that's something important I, I was missing to mention at the beginning. So try to know your students' interest. You have high school students. Where are they going to go after school, after high school? What majors are they studying? So ask students to go through those areas where they are going to study at the university so they can actually be interested. They have interest in what they are learning. Um, this is one thing, travel around the world. There are, another, there are other cities in Google Earth that the students can go and see the information. They can come and bring, oh, I didn't know about this. This fact I didn't know about Italy. These things I didn't know about Egypt. And everything I learned from Google Earth because someone shared some specific details that is not outside the web. It's just in Google Earth. Some of the ideas. Wow. And Mr. Pala, thank you for all those questions. But the last one for you, because I know that all the participants love what you presented today. And the question is, the last one, a difficult one, but I know you have the answer. If you can share with us the presentation. Oh, yes. The <laughs> wonderful people at the Section de Idiomas will share the link of the presentation at the end of the of this session. So you will have it there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be on YouTube. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Hector Palala, for solving all of our dots. Well, the TTS program is sponsored by the United States Embassy, AGEDE, and with the support of Sección de Idiomas and Facultad de Humanidades, has developed three manuals with material that you might find interesting and useful. We are sharing the drive folder link from where you may download the manuals in this moment. Please, don't forget to fill in the attendance form and remember, it will be only available for 15 minutes after the conference ends. Also, remember that diplomas will be available on June 12, 2021. Thank you very much for your participation in this conference. 
We invite you to forward transmission on these three days of TTS 2021. Have a nice evening.